Next on Broadway Profiles, Broadway surviving the shutdown, making the most of a bad situation. Plus, Tiger King, the musical parody, directed and performed by some amazing Broadway favorites. And we'll tell you how you can help the theater community when they need it most. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is Broadway Profiles at Home, presented by Broadway.com. Welcome to Broadway Profiles at Home. I'm your host, Tamsin Fidel. Well, Broadway is still on pause, two months and counting, just like much of the country. Take a look. New York City definitely should not look like this. The theater district definitely should not look like this. Right now, the Midtown streets are largely an eerie, vacant monument to the shows and stars that should be on stage right now. And make no mistake, Broadway will be back. It's not if, it's when, just not yet. So our show will be a little different. It's recorded entirely from our homes, from my home, from the homes of Broadway stars, musicians, and composers. We've got great interviews and performances. We're thanking our medical workers, and it's shown us anything is possible. So in this new normal, we all have to shift our focus and our priorities and find new ways to stay entertained. So first, let's rewind to last fall. The last time I saw Katherine Gallagher was just before Jagged Little Pill the musical opened on Broadway. These days, she's still making music while she's waiting to go back on stage. So let's let's jump into it. How, how is your new normal? What is your new normal right now? My new normal is bizarro land. Um, I pretty much wake up. I do one of the many online streaming workouts to try and keep oh, myself in shape for whenever we do return. <laughs> um, I will say it is shocking. You forget how... Um, energizing a three-hour musical can be and then you stop doing it for a week and you're like oh my god <laughs> I'm missing out um, so yeah so I basically I wake up I work out I write some songs I built a little studio here so I've been recording and my dog is here and he's having a blast and you know so we're just kind of trying to stay sane and, and make sure we stay home and keep the world as safe as we can so talk to me about song you said you were writing every day I am, you know, I I sort of started as a songwriter. That was like my main um, passion, my main drive, and, and my main focus. I, went, I studied it in school, and, and so I've really been taking advantage of this time and going through my phone and all the way back to like September, notes of ideas I'd had, and, and um, learning how to record, which I don't really know how to do, <laughs> but I'm like calling my friends that I record with all the time, and I'm like, okay, what, what's a plug-in? And they're like, we got you. <laughs> so it's been like a little college. Yeah, it's like a learning curve. Can we see your recording studio? Can you show it to me on your computer or as an Yeah, it's really, it's really unimpressive, but I will show it. <laughs> right now it's just a desk in uh, what used to be my grandmother's room. So okay. it's filled with inspiration. Um, <laughs> but honestly, this is literally all, all she is. She's this little guy. And then the laptop goes there. That's Jack. That's my dad. <laughs> I sit here and I record on this little mic. Where the magic happens. This is it. I got this one shirt that still smells like you. And I still buy the same shampoo. The one you like. In the bottle, baby blue. Could tie it all back to you. Tell the truth. I'm gonna go up north to Western Spring, and I'm gonna drive to Newport and Spring. I'm gonna do everything you promised we do. Oh, all the things that you couldn't see through. Oh, I, 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 gonna love me better than you. You. But none of that will come to any use. 
is no I'm gonna love you Till I don't remember to Think of all the things I wish we do I'm gonna go up north to the sun this weekend. I'm gonna drive to the port in spring. I'm gonna do everything you promised we do. All the things that you couldn't see through. Oh, I, I, I wanna love me better than you. Oh my God, <laughs> brought me to someplace different. I'm like, oh, I'm that's beautiful. Thank that's you so really much. Beautiful. You're just so talented. I told you the first time I met you and uh, you know, really, you really are just so talented. So keep that up. Thank you. Nearly 65 million households have streamed the Netflix docuseries Tiger King and Broadway stars and composers, several of them, have latched onto the idea of making a Joe Exotic musical. Broadway.com's editor-in-chief Paul Wontorek is here to talk tigers. Hi there, Paul. Thanks, Tamsin. Lock up a bunch of Broadway talents in their homes and they're gonna get creative. Yes, Tiger King the musical, a parody, is really a thing, with songwriters like Andrew Lippa, Ingrid Michaelson, and Carmel Dean writing songs for stars like Tony winner Kristen Chenoweth with Will Chase and Hamilton's Philippa Sue. I talked to everyone to find out more. Talk a little bit about how Tiger King came into your life. I watched it over two uh, epic uh, viewings and on, I think it was March 28th, I, I usually uh, don't tweet a lot. Something overtook me and I wrote, I am making the Tiger King musical parody. I will crush it. And I realized I had to write for Carol. And of course I had to call Kristen. I was obsessed with the Tiger King, and then I watched Carol, and I was like, she definitely killed her husband. I'm obsessed with forensic science, and I thought, they chopped him up, they chopped him up and fed him to the tigers. And so I, I just knew I had to do it. Time to rock and roll, little pieces, little pieces. I wrote a couple songs and the first one wasn't was fine and then I wrote Tigers and Young Men um, and <laughs> I, I wrote it in the basement and I came running upstairs I was like Will you have to sing this as Joe it would be so funny I like tigers and young men. immediately I thought wow Saf is the most beloved character I thought well this needs to be a love song between Saf and the tiger I don't know if, if he's gonna see it or not but hopefully he will and he'll like it if Saf sees it I hope that I do him justice and and I'm honored to be able to sing uh, his voice in this medium there are some people out there who think Carol might just be a victim and there were never any little pieces. What do you say? Do you feel like, are you uh, taking a, a side in this, in this true crime? This whole thing is part of our pop culture now and we are doing a parody. This is funny and I'm gonna make a video of it and that's it. Little pieces. That's definitely an unexpected thing that we didn't see coming, a Tiger King musical parody. <laughs> I mean, who would have thought, right? Uh, but you know what, How did it comes about because people are watching Netflix. It is one of the most watched shows on Netflix right now. Well, and when you put this many creative 
theater people, like, and they're stuck in their homes with no stage. They all like are like coming up with work to do, you know, and staying creative. All right, Paul, some more things to talk about because there is a lot going on when you talk about creative staying at home and you, you know, you're a part of a lot of it and seeing it all come together. Uh, let's talk first of all about uh, Steve uh, Sondheim's birthday. Oh my God, we put together this enormous online event for Broadway.com. Um, Raul Esparza, who's a, a well-loved Broadway star, came to me with this idea and the people who ended up in this concert, Meryl Streep, Bernadette Peters, Patti Lapone, Mandy Patinkin. I mean, there's literally too many people to name, but I had to name them because they were all very influential on making me love theater. All these actors self-taped these videos they made to these Sondheim songs. So, you know, the ring lights and the setup, it's so, it's, so you're actually seeing Meryl Streep is filming herself. Right. Bernadette Peters is filming. I mean, it's it's so amazing to, <laughs> to think of, this is the world we live in now. Who, who would have ever thought, right? Let's hear it for the ladies who lunch. Everybody rise. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the things going on. A buyer and seller I want to address, first of all. What is it and uh, what do we need to know? So Michael Urie, who's well-loved from Ugly Betty, but he's also a great uh, stage actor, he did this one-man show, Buyer and Seller, seven or eight years ago off Broadway. It was a big hit. Barbara Streisand wrote this book about her home, My Passion for Design, it's called. And she revealed that she had her own shopping mall in her basement. So this whole one-man play is about an out-of-work actor who gets a job working in the mall and interacts with Barbara Streisand. It's <laughs> such a great play, but they were supposed to do a benefit of it for mm -hmm. Rattlestick Theater and Pride Plays, which is Michael Urie's um, festival of LGBTQ play readings. Sure. And so they were supposed to do a live benefit and they sold out. And then when all this happened, they approached me and said, we still want to do it, what can we do? So we put together this amazing live version from Michael Urie's living room with two cameras, it was a huge hit, people loved it, and it got great reviews. We actually got reviewed, which is amazing. It's really been an interesting experiment, directing play readings and then concerts, and really kind of like pushing the boundaries and making people sort of see the possibilities. Look, we all want to be back in a theater. We all want to be together watching shows and cheering people on live. But there is something to be said for, for this technology and these talents and what, what you can create when you bring them together. We're making it happen somehow. Paul, thank yeah. you. I appreciate it. Appreciate the time you, watching. You have seen him in everything from Kiss Me Kate to Shuffle Along to TV's Frasier. Well, now you can see him several nights a week singing from his apartment window. Actor Brian Stokes Mitchell is at home after recovering from COVID-19, but he is still performing. And right now he's also helping struggling artists as a chairman of the Actors Fund. When did you realize that you were, you know, part of this or had had symptoms of COVID? For me, it started out as a sinus infection, but one particular night it got terribly, terribly bad. And I remember laying in bed, I had a fever of about 103.5, felt like a truck had hit me. My body was, was contorted because it was in spasm. I had the worst headache of my life. I had a terri this terrible fever, but I had a heating pad in bed with me because I could not get warm enough and I had the, the worst chills ever. Now I have many, many friends on Broadway that are dealing with the same thing. This fever that for me spiked up to 104.8. And um, yeah, I thought you'd be dead at that point. And I was really concerned. I remember calling my doctor saying, should I be in the hospital now? What, you know, so I guess you could go up to 105, 106 but then organ damage happens after that. So over the course of about 10 to 13 days, it dropped down to normal. And now, as I said, I've been about 10 days probably uh, you know, totally fine without any, any symptoms of it. <laughs> You have been singing out your window, yes. is that right? Yeah, I decided as a thank you to uh, 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 the healthcare workers, all, all of our first responders, and then also people like the delivery people that bring us food, the people that are in my market just down the street that are there every day. I call them the everyday heroes of New York. And and so I thought, you know what? I, I don't think I'm gonna sing something. And so I started singing The Impossible Dream. Okay, let's talk about the Actors Fund because we, uh, you know, we're doing this show and we, we wanna keep Broadway profiles alive because we're keeping the spirit of Broadway alive until you guys have those lights flicked back on. Talk about what the Actors Fund needs and what it's doing right now. Yeah, there's some pretty incredible things going on. First, for those that aren't aware of, of, of the Actors Fund or don't really know who we are, the Actors Fund has been around for 138 years. It's called the Actors Fund, 
but it doesn't just serve actors, it serves anyone in the entertainment community. The performing arts community has been hit particularly hard. Just for me personally, um, uh, I was, I've had every concert canceled for the next six, six months, but uh, I say that not you know, to draw attention to my plight, I, I'd say to draw attention to the plight of, it's look at all of the other people that are involved. There's a whole group, sometimes hundreds of people working that also have lost their jobs right now. So right now, the Actors Fund has actually provided over $4 million um, to, uh, to more than 4,000 performing arts and entertainment professionals, which is a lot more than usual. Are you all coming together to do different performances online, obviously? This is a, this is a time when artists are empowered. James Wesley and Seth Rudetsky, who are on a serious radio, have uh, this show called Stars in the House. Um, and, and you can uh, go to starsinthehouse.com. It's on every day they're doing it, two and eight, which is the Broadway schedule, except for they're doing it every single day, which is, I still don't know how they're doing it. Also, so there's Hump Day with Hampshire, which is a Schitt's Creek star, um, Emily Hampshire, uh, has a live stream show that she does as well. Rosie O'Donnell did a kind of a Stars in the House show for a one night only. She brought a show back and raised $600,000 from the fund. My friend Jason Howland, um, who was a musical director for Beautiful, came up with this incredible idea. It was the most amazing thing. He arranged, um, did an arrangement of You've Got a Friend. He sang all of the parts. Uh, he sent them to all of the members of Beautiful who are all on the road, sometimes in foreign countries as well. Mm -hmm. They learn these parts, they take themselves singing it. This incredible video that was put together, including Carol King singing uh, at the end and it's uplifting and it's delightful and it's funny and it's inspiring and just to see how did they do that again it's this incredible collaboration we are in it together and that's the real value i think of art and artists right now is it brings us together it makes us empathetic it makes us realize we are all one species we are all one kind of unity here and we're all in this together and we're best when we help each other and inspire each other and collaborate. I actually ended up talking to Brian for over 45 minutes. You can hear our whole conversation on our new Broadway Profiles podcast, and you can get that wherever you get your podcasts. In the meantime, if you want to help support artists or if you need help, here are a couple of important links. The Actors Fund website has a ton of good information. That's actorsfund.org. Another great resource is Americans for the Arts. That website is just as simple. Visit americansforthearts.org. Here's another great story about how the Broadway community is making a difference during this pandemic. Production Resource Group usually provides equipment to theater productions, but now they've shifted their focus to making face shields for healthcare workers in New York City. So far, they've been able to make and distribute 132,000 shields to our local hospitals. Coming up next, new music from the cast of Sing Street. Plus, I'll talk to the show's choreographer, Sonia Taya. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is Broadway Profiles. She's standing on the corner, like an angel in disguise. And as I look a little closer, she's got dangerous eyes. This is a new musical video from the cast of Sing Street. The song is called Riddle of the Model. Before the Broadway shutdown, the cast was able to record a full album and make a couple of these videos. That album, by the way, just dropped in April. And just like the show, it's an ode to the British rock bands of the 1980s. Sing Street had not even played in front of a Broadway audience before the entire cast was told to go home. I caught up with Sonia Taya, who's a choreographer of Sing Street and also Milan Rouge. Take a look. Let's dive in and talk about it because I, um, you know, I, I feel like right now art is getting people through. Can you talk a little bit about what, what you've been doing? Yeah, I, I felt a morning period inside. I said to myself, I need to take this time to really um, dissect my part in the universe and what I can do for this time to nurture myself so I can be a better person for the world when I am able to touch and communicate. So I'm trying to stay true to that. I'm trying to look at um, my contributions to the world and what I can do and how I'm able to maintain 
um, sanity for myself and remember who I am when I can't be who really who I am, and that's a choreographer. Your art is all about people touching for the most part, right? And uh, so I'm, I'm wondering how you as a choreographer, you know, bodies and touch and feel, and how has this impacted your art? I'm inspired to create pieces about distance and the space between and the hesitation to communicate. Me and my girlfriend were just talking about it. It was like Mother Nature, Mother Nature was like, listen, go to your room. Right, right. <laughs> You know, stop. Talk a little bit about what you have on Broadway right now. Was Milan Rouge your first Broadway show? Yes. Well, it was. I, I don't think I realized that that was your first. I felt like you were just a veteran of Broadway. <laughs> um, so you have, uh, and then uh, Sing Street was supposed to be in previews now. Is that correct? Yesterday was our first preview. This is your life. We had a Zoom party, the Sing Street cast and the design, everyone was there, it was awesome to see everybody, but that, that one hurt yesterday. But we have such incredible producers that are, that are you know, we're in agreement, of course, with the health and safety aspect of it and why we need to do this. And I totally get it and I'm with them and everyone needs to stay home. And so this can pass and we can understand what the next steps are. I love our community and I, I'm, I miss them so much. I cannot wait to see my my community of incredible artists creating work in regards to this pandemic. Motown Philly back again and again and again. When we come back, I'm going to talk with one of the founding members of Boys to Men, Sean Stockman, about his new album and how the Temptations influenced his music. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is Broadway Profiles. It's almost impossible to overstate the incredible impact the Temptations have made on the world, both with music and now theater. And there is every reason to believe Ain't Too Proud the Musical will return to Broadway once this pandemic is over. But right now, one of the people most influenced by the Temptations is out with some brand new music. You definitely know Sean Stockman from Boys to Men, and he just released his first solo album. We had a chance to talk about the new record and his musical inspirations. The music that I created, coincidentally, uh, and this was way before this pandemic occurred. You know, I always said that I wanted this type of music to be the type of music that everybody sits and relaxes at home and chills, and whether they're cooking with their significant other and hanging out at the crib or driving to work or from work or whatever. Just a, a nice musical backdrop for somebody to listen to and hum and sing along to. And coincidentally, this pandemic happened, and as bittersweet as this is, I think because of it, people are more receptive to the music which I'm grateful for. Growing up um, in Philly, you know, around at, at my time when I was younger, um, the Temptations, the Motown sound um, was very influential. You know, the harmonies, the dance steps those guys used to do. Like, it was stuff that our parents used to play. Fast forward years later, us being signed to Motown, we actually got to meet those guys and, and learn from them and do some shows with them and actually um, sit and, and get schooled by them, you know what I mean? Like, you know, they would sit and just give us jewels, you know, uh, wisdom, and, and, and we took it all in. So if, if you're a group, if you've ever been in a singing group, they, they were the, the catalyst, they were the, the blueprint to what uh, groups should represent. We'll be right back with Broadway Profiles at Home. opened on Broadway one year ago and it will definitely be back. It's Broadway's best musical of 2019, winner of eight Tony Awards, including Best Director honors for Rachel Chafkin. And now during this Broadway shutdown, she's working on a new project aimed at helping struggling artists. Check this out. 
talk a little bit about it. How, how have things been for you in particular? Because I know that you've got a whole crew of people that, you know, rely on uh, your reaction to things. Sure. So obviously, um, Hades Town is dark right now, along with all of Broadway. I feel, and I think most of the Hades Town family is is fairly fortunate because the show has been running. We had the uh, uh, luck of the opening last year versus this spring. I have found myself very concerned, of course, for um, all freelance artists and workers, um, technicians tied to the freelance life who um, don't fit within the normal unemployment uh, system. I was walking with a social distance walk with a dear friend yesterday who's a beautiful storyteller and composer who's had his entire year canceled uh, and he doesn't know what he's going to do. I know that you're involved with uh, the Trickle Up. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, uh, Taylor Mack, who's one of the organizers, who's a very dear old friend and collaborator, he reached out to me about it. And um, the idea behind the Trickle Up is very simple, which is to reach out to a group, I think there's 50 artists, um, all of us making um, unique content. Uh, so it's stuff that can't be seen anywhere else. Uh, the network is gonna keep expanding with new content. Um, and you can subscribe to it for $10 a month and all income from the Trickle Up Network um, in $10,000 batches, commissions to artists. And so basically one by one, a name is chosen at random from each of the contributing artists who named artists living at below or near the poverty line who were in need of this money. One by one, they're chosen out of a hat. Um, so hopefully, um, some fairness in the randomness uh, for these $10,000 commissions. And that's going to do it for us. Until next time, stay safe and stay healthy. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is Broadway Profiles at Home, powered by Broadway.com. <laughs>